welcome back. So, we have been discussing our acid and base systems in the previous lecture sessions right and we have been uh, delving into greater detail with respect to the applications and the applications anyway that we have been looking at was uh, given initial concentrations of various acids or bases what would be the equilibrium concentrations and obviously what would the pH at equilibrium right. This is what we have been looking into and we looked into them in greater detail and then we moved on to log C pH graphs right and as we discussed the log C pH graphs will give you an idea about how the system changes with pH right and again they are were widely used uh, in the past and I guess still widely used in India as of now. But with your particular uh, knowledge or background now that you are gaining with respect to be able to use women tech right and also with respect to the mathematical tools available such as uh, Excel and such you can do away with uh, uh, what is it now the log C pH diagrams. But again still whenever you are looking for a snapshot of the system and if you have one readily available I am talking about a log C pH graph here you can always have a look at it right. So, again now we are going to uh, move further and uh, we are going to look at a particular acid base system <coughs> pardon me which we come across everywhere right in the natural systems and in the engineered systems right and obviously this is ubiquitous right or omnipresent and what does that mean it is something that is present everywhere and in considerable concentrations right and if you have not guessed that already it is going to be the carbonate system and why carbonate specifically uh, because subsurface you have deposits of calcium carbonate and in the atmosphere you have carbon dioxide. So, both of these more or less will affect your carbonate system and thus because both these deposits and the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are ever present that is almost always uh, going to lead to considerable concentrations of your uh, carbonate system or the carbonic acid or the bicarbonate or CO3 2 minus right. So, we are going to look at this system in greater detail over the next uh, 2 uh, lecture sessions at least I believe. So, let us move on to what we are going to look at here. So, uh, what are some of the species that we look at here right. So, here is the graph that we are going to look at. So, we will come back to this. So, the species primarily are CO3 2 minus the carbonate. So, we are going to identify the species in this in this acid base system. So, there are 3 major species that we are concerned with that are going to be at equilibrium in your aqueous phase. The first one is the carbonate, the other is the bicarbonate and the last one is the carbonic acid and the carbonic acid is obviously going to stay in equilibrium with the carbon dioxide in your gaseous phase. So, let us go by one by one. So, CO3 2 minus an important source of this is your CaCO3 deposits right in the subsurface or you know in the ocean and such or the ocean bed and so on. So, in general you will have considerable, uh, or a considerable source of CaCO3. And the second case is going to be or the second species that we are going to look at is the bicarbonate, the bicarbonate and as you see from this particular log pardon me the speciation diagram here right at pH 7 right and where is pH 7. You see that the bicarbonate is the predominant form of the species that is going to uh, be present right or the predominant species in the carbonate system. So, again at natural uh, pH or neutral pH pardon me the bicarbonate is the particular ion that you are almost always concerned with and that is what we see here. Again uh, let us move on to the last particular species that is H2CO3 the carbonic acid the carbonic acid pardon me. So, thus carbonic acid which is going to be in the aqueous phase is going to be in equilibrium with carbon dioxide in the gaseous phase right H 2 O H 2 C O 3 ok it is balanced. So, what does this mean now let us say right uh, let us say if I have a beaker of water let us say and I put it up or you know leave it open to the atmosphere right what is going to happen now you have carbon dioxide in the gaseous phase or in the atmosphere all around it. So, over some time let us say a few days or a day depending upon the temperature and the conditions in that particular room right you are going to have an equilibrium between the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere or the gaseous phase and the carbonic acid in the aqueous phase right. This is the equilibrium phase equilibrium here again right. 
So, that is going to be achieved over time and that is the equation that we are going to look at H 2 CO 3 here right. And this is one particular aspect that I want to stress upon. Uh, so, people might have heard of uh, global warming right and you uh, talk about this greenhouse gas, greenhouse gases carbon dioxide, methane and so on. Uh, but one uh, aspect that is maybe uh, that has not received as much attention, uh, but the scientific community is acutely aware of it is that increasing carbon dioxide concentration. So, think of this now other than uh, the global uh, warming potential, one major aspect that threatens the uh, way of life in our aquatic systems is going to be uh, the pH or the change in pH or the drop in pH. So, think of this now. So, you have your atmosphere let us say I mean I am going to model this with uh, earth and this is these are your oceans right and this is your atmosphere. So, as the carbon dioxide concentration in your gaseous phase keeps increasing right. So, that is what we are uh, looking at. So, obviously, there is going to be an equilibrium with the carbon dioxide in the gaseous phase with the carbon dioxide that is going to be dissolved in your aqueous phase. And obviously, as we just looked at it you know carbon dioxide in the aqueous phase is going to stay as H 2 CO 3 or the carbonic acid. So, what does this mean now? So, as you keep increasing the concentration of your or the partial pressure of your carbon dioxide right what is going to happen now you are going to increase the concentration of H 2 CO 3 in your ocean and H 2 CO 3 as we know right with our background in, in the uh, past few classes is an acid that can donate a proton depending on the pH right. So, what is going to happen here you are going to decrease the or uh, have a slight decrease anyway because we are going to look at the large volumes here and the pKa 2 is relatively high. So, anyway there is going to be a decrease if ever even a slight decrease or there has been a decrease of the pH of the oceans now. And the key issue here is that most of the aquatic systems are remarkably or almost all the aquatic systems are remarkably sensitive to pH or any change in pH. So, as the pH drops let us say even by uh, 0.1 let us say you know I think uh, 6.7 to 6.5 or so uh, let us look at the graph in the next uh, lecture session or uh, the one after that. So, if you look at that let us say the pH has uh, dropped or the increasing carbon dioxide concentrations have an effect on uh, the pH of your oceans now and that has a remarkable effect or you know uh, cascading effect on your particular aquatic systems or aquatic life. So, that is something that we need to be again acutely aware of other than just the global warming potential right. So, again let us come back to our particular cases here. So, we are talking about the carbonate system and why it is ubiquitous it is present everywhere and the three species that we in general look at are uh, CO 3 2 minus the bicarbonate and the carbonic acid. And as we just talked about the carbonic acid right can stay in the form of H 2 CO 3 itself in the aqueous phase or as dissolved carbon dioxide right dissolved carbon dioxide. So, in general when people talk about carbonic acid they refer to both the dissolved carbon dioxide and the actual carbonic acid in uh, in the water right. So, again some people use the notation with respect to uh, an asterisk let us say right and I am referring to. So, whenever you see H 2 CO 3 with an asterisk this is what it means to right uh, different uh, what we say terms more or less or terminology. Uh, so, now we are going to dig uh, further into it. So, again before you go further you know this is an acid based system right. So, obviously, what are the major aspects that you need to immediately think of right. It is going to be the pKa what is the pKa of the system and as you see it is a diprotic acid it is H 2 CO 3. So, it can give out two protons depending on the pH. So, we also are going to look at the pH of the system and we are going to look at the two acid dissociation constants right. So, as we can see from this particular graph here it is going to be around 6.3 and 10.3 right, but we are in general concerned with the neutral pH. So, as we see right at neutral pH 
uh, most of it as in almost 80 percent of it as you see this is the ionization fraction and what does uh, what do these ionization fractions give an idea about let us write them down alpha naught alpha 1 and alpha 2 that is going to be equal to H 2 CO 3 the concentration by the total acid or let me just write total acid here and we are going to define total acid like we did elsewhere as sum of all the conjugate acid and base species. Right, and alpha 1 will give you an idea about the fraction that is present as HCO3 or the bicarbonate, I guess, HCO3 minus, and alpha 2 is going to give you an idea about the carbonate fraction or fraction as carbonate, right? Alpha naught, alpha 1, and alpha 2, that is what you see here. So, anyhow, coming back to the graph again at pH 7, we have almost 80 percent of it as HCO3 minus and some of it as I guess the 20 percent as your H 2 CO 3 right. This is your H 2 CO 3 graph and that is what you see here. So, the two species uh, of the carbonate system that obviously are present at your neutral pH, uh, uh, pH are going to be H CO 3 minus and H 2 CO 3. And obviously, as you see from this particular graph uh, with respect to the speciation you see that the pKa uh, 2 is 10.3. So, thus the CO3 2 minus is only going to be present in the system at the relatively higher pH right and that is a take home message here. So, in general again we are concerned with HCO3 minus and H2CO3 and mostly with HCO3 minus right and this particular bicarbonate ion or the anion is going to affect your system in multiple ways the applications of which we are going to look at further down the uh, line let us see right. So, obviously again we are now going to look at your particular uh, system uh, with respect to predicting the equilibrium values right of the various species or equilibrium concentrations pardon me of the various species given that you have initial concentrations of some relevant components. So, let us look at that. Uh, so, I guess uh, there are two aspects we need to clarify first one that we will work it out for a closed system and why are we like working it out for the specific and I guess the question that should arise is why are we looking at specifically a closed system and why are we defining that specifically now right as we just uh, discussed in the last few minutes we see that H 2 CO 3 right can be in equilibrium or will be in equilibrium with the carbon dioxide in the gaseous phase. So, for example, let us say a solution that has carbonic acid or the carbonate system in it is open to the atmosphere let us say it is not closed anymore, but it is open to the atmosphere. So, depending upon the relevant concentrations the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can either dissolve into the aqueous phase or the carbonic acid can reach equilibrium or leave the system as CO2 into the gaseous phase again. So, let us try just try to represent what we have been talking about. So, for example, let us say you know this is my closed system and there is a specific concentration here with respect to H 2 CO 3, H CO 3 minus and CO 3 2 minus let us see right. But later on let us say I open up the system do you think the concentrations are going to stay the same with respect to uh, H 2 CO 3, H CO 3 minus and CO 3 2 minus no and why is that because the carbonic acid is going to be in equilibrium right or the carbon dioxide in the gaseous phase is going to be in equilibrium with the carbon dioxide in the aqueous phase. And what do you see here? So, you can either see a transfer of CO 2 from the gaseous to aqueous or vice versa depending upon the relevant concentrations and we know that CO 2 in the aqueous phase is going to be in equilibrium with H 2 CO 3 in the aqueous phase right. So, that is what we just discussed. So, we are going to work it out for uh, two aspects right uh, and obviously, that is uh, relevant here. So, whenever somebody talks about the carbonate system let us say or an experiment involving carbonate you need to look at you know are they trying to maintain a particular carbonate concentration and if so you know would that stay in equilibrium with the partial pressure that you would expect in your particular atmosphere or is it a closed system if so then that can be uh, that can go ahead I guess right. Anyhow, let us come back to our uh, drawing table here and we are now working it out for a closed system which is not open to the atmosphere right 
and let us say uh, for the sake of an example let us say we are adding NaHCO3 and Na2CO3 to our system at relevant concentrations let us say these are our recipe species or initial concentrations that we are act adding to our system. So, I am adding NaHCO3 and Na2CO3 to the system and I want to know uh, what is going to the pH and what are the relevant concentrations of your various species right that you would expect in this particular system. So, let us look at that. Again obviously, what are we going to look at? The only way to solve these is going to be the component balance, component balance right and whenever we look at component balance we obviously need to define the species. So, for this particular carbonate system we know that the species are going to be H 2 CO 3, H CO 3 minus and CO 3 2 minus the relevant acid and conjugate bases or acids right and what else we are always going to have H plus and OH minus and here we also have sodium. So, we are also going to have the relevant sodium the salt here right and because this is a closed species we do not have any other gaseous phase uh, species such as carbon dioxide here, but if it were an open system which we are going to work out in the next lecture session or once we are done with this particular aspect we are going to list or we need to list carbon dioxide in the gaseous phase too right. We are looking at species, species as in what is the system or we are trying to analyze the system at equilibrium. So, in this particular case it is a closed system, it is not open to the atmosphere third there is no, uh, no chance of equilibrium with the gaseous phase or no gaseous phase species in our current list right. And then uh, the key is to choose the components and what are the components obviously we always try to choose the H plus or the proton and then the most deprotonated form of the acid and that is going to be CO 3 2 minus and then the salt or the sodium here right. And then the formation equations let us list them out please, the formation equations. So, I am going to first list all the uh, species here. So, I will go with the easier ones first Na plus H plus OH minus CO 3 2 minus HCO3 minus and H2CO3 right. So, let us see how can I form them I need one component of Na plus to be able to form Na plus, I need one component of H plus to be able to form H plus, I need a minus one component of H plus to be form able to form OH minus, I need one component of CO3 2 minus to form CO3 2 minus, I need one each of H and CO3 2 minus to be able to form HCO3 minus and similarly I need two components of H and one component of CO3 2 minus to be able to form my particular H2CO3 here right. So, I am done with the formation equations here. So, obviously the next step would be the tableau right and first here we are going to list the components they are H plus and what else please CO3 2 minus and Na plus. Again I am going to list the species, so Na plus, H plus, OH minus, CO3 2 minus, HCO3 minus and H2CO3 right. In the tableau though we are also always going to have to list our recipe species or the species that we are adding to the system initially and these are the two species here and what are they here please NaH. CO3 not or the initial concentration of NaHCO3 that we are putting in and Na2CO3 not. So, again uh, we are we have a closed system you are adding NaHCO3 and Na2CO3 initially and they are that is going to dissolve or both those compounds are going to dissolve and then they are going to form new species which we just listed right and then here we are trying to predict the concentration at equilibrium right. So, again let us move on here and from the formation equations I am going to write this down it is going to be 1 0 0 0 0 and 0 and it is going to be one component required here and two components of sodium required here right and here we have 6 and 6 we are done there this is going to be 0 1 minus 1 0 1 and 2 and where do we get these values from obviously from your formation equations here right. If you look at the coefficients here of the relevant components that is where we get them from 
and CO3 2 minus here it is going to be you need 0 of CO3 2 minus 0 components of CO3 2 minus to form Na plus 0 components of CO3 2 minus to form H plus similarly with OH minus, but with respect to CO3 2 minus you need 1 same case with HCO3 minus and H2CO3 and now coming back to your particular initial species and for CO3 2 minus it is going to be again 1 here and 1 here and here it is going to be 1 and 0 right. Uh, so, uh, we will neglect Na plus because it usually plays little to no further role right it is a salt it does not play uh, further role. So, we are going to only look at uh, the total component uh, balance with respect to the H and with respect to the uh, CO3 2 minus right. So, we will work that out further and see how we can analyze the system and understand what are the relevant variables that we are going to have to consider in a closed system right. So, let us uh, move on uh, let me see if I can remember. So, H total is going to be equal to H plus minus OH minus and what else do we have I believe we have HCO3 minus and we will certainly have 2 times H2CO3 and that is going to be equal to what now your NaHCO3 not right. So, let me see if we miss anything. So, 1, 2, 3, 4 species are going to be contain the component H plus and that is going to be equal to NaHCO3 not 1 times right and same case with CO3 2 minus. So, the CO3 total component balance is going to be equal to what now please concentration of CO3 2 minus plus concentration of HCO3 minus plus concentration of H2 CO3 and that is going to be equal to NaHCO3 that you are putting in initially and also the Na2CO3 that you are putting in initially right. Uh, so, let us go back and that is what we have here. So, again uh, what do we have here we are balancing the component with respect to H here and the only source of that component is the initial NaHCO3 that you are putting in and same case we are balancing the CO3 total here in the second equation and the only source of your particular CO3 in your system is the NaHCO3 and Na2CO3 that you are plugging in initially right. So, here I believe we have around 6 species but with the sodium balance we were able to or we can calculate the sodium concentration. So, let us remove that as an unknown. So, we are left with 5 variables right, but here we have only 2 component balance equations thus we have only 2 uh, equations here. So, for 5 variables we have 2 equations and thus we are still uh, looking for the other 3 and obviously here uh, we are looking at the equilibrium solution right. So, obviously we the answer lies in looking at equilibrium or the relevant equilibrium constants. So, look at let us try to uh, write down or figure out what the relevant uh, equations are obviously because these are acid and base systems we will have the relevant acid dissociation equations right. So, let us write them down. So, you know that H2CO3 can dissociate into what now H plus and HCO3 minus you are going to have that and again HCO3 minus can further dissociate or will stay in equilibrium with H plus and CO3 2 minus right H2 CO3 will stay in equilibrium with H CO3 minus and CO3 2 minus and obviously we will always have water dissociation right H plus plus OH minus and so I am going to list the relevant equilibrium constants Ka1 and Ka2 for the 2 uh, uh, protons that can be released by H2 CO3 and the water dissociation constant Kw and the Ka1 is going to be equal to the activity which I am going to approximate by H plus H plus into HCO3 minus by concentration of H2CO3 right and similarly I am going to have Ka2 equal to H plus into CO3 2 minus by concentration of HCO3 minus and Kw is going to be equal to the concentration of H plus into the concentration of OH minus right. So, obviously all these need to be uh, defined in terms of activities right, uh, but we are assuming that the ionic strength is uh, relatively less and thus we can approximate activities by the concentrations right. So, that is what we have here and now we have 3 additional equations 
right and so we can solve for our 5 unknowns yes. So, earlier we had 2 component balance equations right or 2 equations from the component balance of H total and CO3 total and now we have 3 further equations from the relevant acid dissociation constants right or equilibrium coefficients too and that is the general term yes. So, let us see how we can analyze this further, but for now we are going to concentrate obviously on H total I guess right. So, obviously as we discussed earlier too right and we looked at ionization fractions too they were derived for using these 3 equations right. So, you will have alpha naught is going to be equal to what now H 2 CO 3 times the concentration of H 2 CO 3 plus H CO 3 minus plus concentration of CO 3 2 minus right and that as you can see the denominator what is the denominator equal to now right and that is going to be equal to or similar to this particular variable here. So, it is going to be equal to the CO 3 total right and uh, we are going to use that further similarly alpha 1 is going to be equal to H CO 3 minus by CO 3 total and alpha 2 is going to be equal to CO 3 2 minus by CO 3 total. Again where do we have this from CO 3 total it is from this particular equation here right. Anyway we are uh, done with that for now. So, let us try to analyze or solve for this particular equation here H total. So, I will move on to the next slide here. So, H total was equal to concentration of H plus minus concentration of OH minus plus concentration of HCO3 minus plus 2 times the concentration of H2CO3 right. So, that is what we have here and we know that this is going to be equal to NaHCO3 that we had initially right. And now taking it further or simplifying it so that we have it only in terms of H plus I am going to have it as Kw by H plus and HCO3 minus what do we just have here I guess and HCO3 minus we have here. So, thus HCO3 minus is going to be equal to alpha 1 into CO3 total right that is what we just had uh, looked at in the earlier slide plus 2 times and what is H2CO3. H2CO3 we can get from this particular equation here that is going to be equal to alpha naught into CO3 total right. So, 2 times alpha naught CO3 total so, thus we are going to arrive at H plus minus Kw by concentration of H plus plus alpha 1 plus 2 alpha naught into CO3 total and thus as we know for anyway for our particular system because we are initially adding NaHCO3. So, that is going to be equal to NaHCO3 naught right. So, again uh, we were looking at the carbonate system why because that is ubiquitous and that is going to be present in uh, most or almost all your engineered systems and certainly in the natural systems right and we try to analyze it for a closed system when it is not open to the atmosphere and here we have the relevant uh, particular uh, variables. So, let us look at what they are. So, in general the relevant variables you need to consider in your carbonate system which is closed for a closed system what are the variables H total, CO3 total and pH right and this and all your variables are going to depend upon these 3 factors and that is obviously apparent from your particular equation here. So, we just looked at how to uh, analyze the closed system right by hand. And now we are going to move on to analyzing the system by our particular software VMintech. And for this, let us look at the particular uh, values with respect to our recipe species. Let us take NaH CO3 naught is equal to 5 millimolar, and let us, for the sake of ease, also take Na2 CO3 naught to also be 5 millimolar, right. So, again uh, here we are trying to work it out by Vimitech and we are saying that both our uh, recipe species or the compounds you are putting in or adding to the solution initially which is NaHCO3 and or which are NaHCO3 and Na2CO3 are both equal to 5 millimolar uh, concentration right. 
So again uh, before we plug in uh, Weeman Tech right we always want to understand or try to predict the uh, species or at least certainly the pH. Uh, so let us try to take a call on that. So keep in mind that uh, we are adding HCO3 and I believe CO3 2 minus sources of HCO3 minus and CO3 2 minus and we are doing that at relatively the same concentration right. So more or less we are adding the conjugate acid and base right. So we are adding that at the same concentration. The key is that we are adding them at the same concentration. So thus, what would you expect that the pKa would be equal to the pH, right? As we know, when the protonated form and the deprotonated form are at equal concentration, when is that? That is only going to be the case when pH equal to pKa and I think the pKa was around or 10.2 or 10.3. So, let us see where we are going to be. Right, so, first we need to define our H total and that I believe is equal to NaHCO3 naught right and that is going to be equal to 5 millimolar and what is our CO3 total that is going to be equal to NaHCO3 naught plus Na2CO3 naught and that is going to be equal to 10 millimolar and uh, the sodium total sodium is going to be equal to NaH CO3 naught plus 2 times Na2 CO3 naught. So, that is going to be equal to 15 millimolar right. So, 5, 10 and 15. So, now let us plug this in into Vimintech and here we have pH to be calculated from mass balance and strength to be calculated. So, I will use the units as millimolar and first we are going to add H plus or I guess initially we have C here. So, we are going to add CO3 2 minus and we believe we had that to be 10 millimolar concentration right. So, I will have that at 10 and add that to the list and next up should be H and that we said was going to be equal to 5 millimolar. So, that is going to be 5 millimolar and we have sodium and that we said was going to be equal to 15 millimolar and that is going to be added to the list. So, let me check or confirm that all the three are the relevant concentrations that we want. So, the three compounds were H at 5 millimolar, CO3 at 10 and NA total at 15 right. So, we are on the right track and I am going to go back to main menu and run uh, Mintech and so obviously, the pH is now nearer to the pK value of 10.2 or 10.3. So, that is something we are fine with and we see that we have different concentrations here right and one reason why the pH might be slightly off is that the ionic strength is relatively high. So, that is going to affect your particular concentrations and that is what you see here I guess 4.2 here and 2.4 here and so on and more importantly let us look at the species distribution what will that give you an idea about? It will tell you in what forms or in what percentages is CO3 total or CO3 present as. So, it looks like it can present as as we know CO3 2 minus HCO3 minus right and looks like nothing will be present as H2CO3. Why is that? Because the pH is 10.7. So, it looks like 42 percent is present as CO3 2 minus right and 51 percent is present as HCO3 minus and one particular species that we missed was NaCO3. I believe that the Ka value for this or the equilibrium constant for this would be relatively uh, less or negligible, but that seems to be a minor error there or minor assumption that should not have been taken. So, anyhow, Vimintech confirms this so that we have 42 percent as CO3 2 minus and 51 percent as HCO3 minus. And why do we have slightly higher concentration of HCO3 minus compared to CO3 2 minus? that is because the pH is 10.07 and the pH is 10.07 and the pKa is 10.3 right. So, which one will predominate now? The protonated form will predominate and the protonated form in this case for that pKa2 is HCO3 minus. So, HCO3 minus is at a slightly higher concentration right and then compared to the CO3 2 minus concentration and I believe that is what we are going to see here HCO3 minus is slightly higher than CO3 2 minus right and I guess uh, with that uh, we will be done with today's lecture session. So, in the next lecture session or couple of lecture sessions anyway we are going to try analyze the open system right 
and uh, with that i'll end my session for today and thank you